What's the deal with you and that exorcist, Eleanor? She had tears in her eyes when we first saw her at Northgand. Velvet poked fun at her, calling her the crybaby exorcist. Why would an exorcist cry? Sacrificing the individual for the good of the many is part of Artorius' philosophy. She seemed troubled by that. She's naive. That she can still carry on shows just how strong she is. It looks like they don't hand out the rank of Praetor to just anyone. Hmm? Just stay sharp around her. That's all. By the way, is that Bienfu character that Magilu was after really a Moloch? He may look strange, but yes. He's still a Moloch. That means Magilu is an exorcist. Why does she call herself a witch then? If she got locked up in that prison, she must have been kicked out of the Abbey. Or she could be a fraud. Yeah. Even if she wasn't an exorcist, she could still perform some tricks with a Moloch like that. I will protect you, Madam Eleanor! Fish me now, demon! <laughs> right? <laughs> Was that laughter? Uh, I'm sorry. Why apologize? Bienfu is funny, right? Right. Then if you want to laugh, laugh! <laughs> <laughs> If you think that's funny, you should give it a try for yourself. Say, Hi, I'm Luffy Set. Uh, all right. Hi, I'm Luffy Set. Knock it off. Huh? What's the problem? People are staring. Don't attract attention. I'm sorry. <sighs> She's so uptight. Let's try it together later, Luffy Set. Uh, all right. You just had to go and name him Luffy Set, huh? You just couldn't stop yourself, and now he gets to suffer the penalty of your poor naming scheme for the rest of the game, potentially, where he's going to constantly, you're going to be mad every time you look at him, or bothered, and he's never going to fully understand why you bring up, why he brings up these really t negative, horrible feelings in your brain, and one day it'll finally come out, but you're still, a, you're still mistreating him for insisting on naming him that way in the first place. Did I have more of these to turn in yet? Oh, new request. Corrupted orb. In the Barona catacombs. Welcome back. That must have been hard work. How does marble curry sound to you? I also have our specialty peach pie on hand. We had a deal. Spill it. <laughs> Shepherd Artorius has gone north, up the Danan Highway, at the Abbey's newest temple, the Empyrean's Throne. He is expected to be there for a while. Are they relocating there? In a sense, yes. They're holding a ritual to move the seat of the Empyrean Innominat. Innominat. In other words, the Abbey's new god. It is a very serious affair, so I imagine Melchior will be there along with the other High Exorcists. Suits us fine. I might even find him there. That will do. Somewhere in there we'll find a chance to strike. Perhaps. But be aware that security near the throne is on high alert. We'll manage to get through. No, you won't. You may be able to fool the guards, but there's no tricking the barrier they've put up. They've used arts to erect a giant wall, keeping outsiders away. But they have to get through themselves. That implies some sort of key, right? Yes. In fact, one of our people is looking into that as we speak. However, I'm afraid... <laughs> It'll cost us. You learn quickly. And here's the bill. Okay, now we're really not being nice. Consider it done. Aren't you going to ask why you have to kill a high priest? I imagine it's because he's the one controlling the nectar supply. The Church is the sole producer and distributor of a highly addictive substance. They rake in huge profits, 
while the common man, along with your people, suffer for it. Does that cover it? You noticed your tasks were related. That was the real test, wasn't it? And you passed. No matter how skilled you are, you have to know more than how to swing a sword to earn my trust. Don't misunderstand my intentions. I'm willing to do anything, if it brings me to Artorias. I ditched my scabbard long ago. I see. So you are the embodiment of a bear blade. A more formal introduction is in order. I am Tabitha Baskerville, leader of the Bloodwing Butterflies. I'm Velvet. Tell me about the High Priest. Each evening, he prays for protection from calamity at the royal villa on the Castle Logris grounds. Tradition holds that the High Priest should be alone for the prayer. That would seem the best time to strike. How do we get into the villa? Carry this insignia with you, and allies of the Bloodwings will offer you their aid. We'll hold up our end. Just find out about that key. Ah, <sighs> uh, Velvet? Are you okay? It's nothing. But you seem... I said it's nothing! Uh Sneaking into the castle will be an all-night job. Let's take this time to get everything ready and then rest at the tavern. Yeah. I totally interpreted that animation as her monster hand pooping. I'm like, what is that little swallowing noise coupled with her bowing up and down weirdly? <laughs> So our insignia is a notepad. Huh. I was picturing like a pin or a patch or something you would display easily, but a notepad. Okay. So we're just gonna have to pull that out on a regular basis. You got more for us? We're all supposed to rest here? If nectar made from vermilion ore is so bad for your health that it was banned, why are they making it? They make it because it was banned. Huh? Just because the powers that be say a rule is for the greater good, it doesn't mean that everyone will see eye to eye with them. If Tabitha's Mabo curry was outlawed, would you really be able to never eat it again? I wouldn't like it, but if it's against the rules... Uh... <laughs> well, you'll get hungry no matter what. People want what they want. But anything forbidden is bound to be rare. And when things are rare, they become expensive. So that's why people make it. The world isn't a simple place. There's an underside to everything. An underside? Contract killers, secret weapons dealers, loan sharks that charge outrageous interest, pirates like me, the folks who offered us mooring for information, and the gilded helovies are all part of it. As are the people who dye chicks blue to sell them at a higher price. And the people who bet on alleyway bug fights. <gasps> And they'll come to you with a smile, so you can't let your guard down if you want to stay safe. What sorts of bugs do they make fight? That's the part that got your attention. By the time we reach the end of this game, Lafayette's going to have a working knowledge on how to run a speakeasy. High Priest Gideon will be alone at night. Rest up, and talk to the Tavern Keep when you're ready. The Shadow Guild. Operates this tavern. It's been that way for generations. The red scarf is a symbol of the Bloodwing butterflies? Aye. You seem to know a lot. Show that insignia to a person in a red scarf, and they'll help you out. I'm surprised they didn't just give us a red scarf. We know for a fact that Captain Eifried was on the prison island for a period of time. And it's true that Melchior took him away. However, I'm afraid that is where the trail grows cold. In any case, we can be sure that the Abbey has him captive. 
but what could they possibly want with him? If their aim is merely to fight piracy, they'd publicly execute him or try to lure you out, would they not? And yet they've done neither. Total silence. I wonder... Could it be they want to get their hands on the relics some say Ifrid brought back from the far continent? The relic from across the sea? Have rumors of that strange thing been going around? It's possible. There was a certain relic that the captain was curiously taken with. Kept it safe. What was it? That's our business. I'll speak no more of it. But if that's truly what they're after, I highly doubt the villa is where they're keeping him locked up. That's not where they keep their torture implements. Quite true. At any rate, I thank you for sharing what secrets you could. I wish you the best of luck on your search for more information. Survival is at stake. An elder sister eating her brother before he inexorably wastes away is not outside the bounds of reason. You needn't hold back, Velvet. Eat, Lafisset. No! No! The hell with you! You and your disgusting words! <laughs> what? Why? You were... You were shouting. Be more careful around me! You know full well I'm a demon! I'm sorry. Damn! Awake or asleep, it's all one long nightmare. Smashing objects together is destruction. Smashing feelings together is life. But objects, tools, so much easier to abuse and toss aside. What does that mean? It means break time is over. Time to get to work, sweetie. Good thing I showed up in time. Don't tell me you're coming too. Sojourn alongside the gloomy demon lady, and the exorcist controlling Bienfu is sure to appear. I told my own fortune, and there it was. Do your fortunes actually hold water? I've been in the castle before, you know. How useful to have Magilu along, they said in the future. Get in my way, and I'll give you the boot. It's the Viper's Nest. They're always watching. Yes, but therein lie shadows, too. Let's look for someone with a red scarf. So if we're to take the characterization here literally, then Magi Lu is the kind of person who will sit by and watch as a child is choked by an adult. Because she was just there and did absolutely nothing to interfere when it was happening. And, oh, what a happy accident that it happened to stop. And, you know, the big, powerful super demon with the claw monster hand didn't enter in the throes of her nightmare murder number two. Lafayette set number two. With a very unfortunate name. So, it would appear that she ate her brother when she was at the bottom of that pit. Which makes sense, because where the hell did the body go? After all, she was down there starving and, and eating. That definitely adds a bit more to her whole, uh, revenge plot. To know that that's something that happened along the way. So we have more characterization. Oh, what is this? Chipped copper coin. Oh, I have 98. Oh, take one, abandon the rest. There we go. 
as opposed to just picking up a few of the, uh, as opposed, to, as opposed to just abandoning the whole thing. They seem to just respawn. I guess I should check. I probably should be selling the copper coins then. I'm predisposed not to sell things in JRPGs, because oftentimes they're weird, obscure crafting materials used for something important. And this might be the case too, but apparently I'm maxing out my inventory. So, we get, we, yeah, we got more texture for Velvet's revenge plan, because now she's, we know something horrible that she had to do besides just witness the death of her, uh, of her brother. Let's see your papers. Checks out. This tunnel over here connects to the castle. It should put you inside the villa. How completely inconspicuous. No one would ever notice that one of the knights randomly has a giant red scarf. <laughs> Boy, there are giant crocodiles in those waters. Crocodiles? A croc's favorite meal is witches. All right, onward and inward. Everyone but Mogilu tread carefully. Some assassin's crew we are. The Bloodwings are a serious organization. I'm impressed that they know about this entrance. And they have agents on the inside to facilitate this little operation, too. They must have branches working all over the Empire. They've probably even figured out how to get cats and dogs working for them. Here's a juicy morsel about them. They make sure even their corpses go to good use. They what? Long ago, one of their agents stole into the castle. When the guards discovered him, they chased him to this very passage. He dove into the water to escape, and then... CRUNCH! Ah! A crocodile devoured him in one massive bite! All that remained was his arm, bobbing to the surface. From this, two important facts were learned. What were they? First, they learned of the existence of this passage. Second, they could serve crocodile meat in town. Crocodile meat rubbed with human blood becomes tender and succulent, perfect for Mabo curry. Then I ate... If it's so tasty, I'll have to try it. Rubbed with the blood of a lying witch. That would hit the spot, I think. And it wouldn't even affect our combat strength. Hey, the kid's a wreck. It was just a joke to help calm him down. It was... a joke? Yeah, I totally made up that part about the crocodile. Mabo curry is actually made from man-eating catfish who- <laughs> Let's keep moving. Right. I'll get you for this, witch killers! Now, there's a sound effect I haven't heard for a while. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> so, do we think that this is gonna work? The switch? Really? Oh, it drops the water. So that was, that was actually necessary. Surprise! Switches and waterways. You can flip switches to drain waterways and create new paths. That's... Yeah. Hey, look! The water level Oh, dropped. God. You don't think there are any alligators down there, do you? Well, that kind of nullified the need of the tutorial, didn't it? So, I wonder how far we're gonna be in this game before Rokuro stops playing the pronoun game with this person he's hunting down. Because everybody in the party is hunting somebody, except for, I believe, Lafacette, who's just... kind of here. I don't know, I just got free will. I guess I'll follow you guys into danger. Just to follow this plan. Uh, you, all you do is choke me sometimes. That's way better than what happened in the last place I worked. So, yeah. This works out. But, uh, Velvet's hunting her villain. Pirate's run hunting the missing pirate. Rokuro's hunting after him! Which, whenever I hear that pronoun game, all I can think of is Final Fantasy uh, X-2. When, because the main character of Final Fantasy could be named in the first game, uh, the, the, the remaining characters in Final Fantasy X-2 had to spend the entire game referring to hit the protagonist of the first game as HIM! That guy! From before! We can't say his name whenever we have voice acting! Which always was funny to me. <laughs> and of course the witch is hunting after a tiny creature that we encountered recently. So everybody's hunting after something. 
And it's just convenient that a lot of them seem to be along the same path, so that's keeping us together as a party. Hey there. Alright. So we got slimes and armors. He looks angry about something, or he's just gonna stand there. Here he comes. Oh my goodness. Look how many there are. Alright, let's do this then. Let's do this. Dangerous encounter. Level 17, weakness is earth. Oh. That's one way to do some early damage. Just got a review here. So that this is the earth heavy combo. That's already a stun. What are they, what's their type called again? Amorphous. Do I have an, an amorphous ha attacker? Yeah! Twin whip. I've got all of your elemental weaknesses in one combo! So it, so it has a anti-amorphous, it has the right element attack, and to top it off it has a stun. Wow, they just keep coming, don't they? So I think there might have been so many enemies that it might have not spawned some of them at first. I forgot to change my target when I did that. Whoops. I think there might be so many enemies in the in the mob that it didn't spawn them all at first and had to start spawning more of them as the fight went on. Well, that's probably one way to get experience. Let's attack you guys next. I'm, sh I'm just, trying to, just trying to attack them as a group if I can. Because so many of these attacks will multi-target. Well, that was brutal. I wish I had power like that. 300 experience, 5 grade. Enemy defeated by Mystic Arts. Right, I forgot to use mine when I had the chance. When I probably should have. Goodness, there's a lot of slimes around here. Hey guys, you want to just all group up together real quick? There we go. I'm sure it'll be fine. That, why did I do that? That was absolutely the wrong attack to use against this guy. Was the armor guy here? Not yet. Maybe he'll spawn later. Oh wow. That was quick. I think, yeah, I've got a, I've got a food that uh, re re helps restore BG, and the, this this fight's such a mayhem lately that uh, yeah, like they're just they're just replenishing it whenever they feel like it at this point. Everyone's BG is constantly filling up as a result of the the constant fighting, and the uh, the fact that the the food restores BG when we hit a certain combo, I believe. Oh my goodness. Well, he's not lasting. They just, they, I just keep getting another spirit, so why not? Oh my goodness. They're just melting. That's just, that's a melt in your mouth goodness right there. How we doing? 400 experience from leveling up again? Damn. Well, we more or less cleared the room out. Thank you for your patronage! Today in Keith Shouts Random Nonsense Phrases for No Reason That Make No Sense. Talk of patronage ensues. <laughs> Why is there a swastika hallway on this map? Nobody will ever understand. Could it be a, a strained reference to the fact that, ac that Japan was once one of the Axis powers? That would never make it into a Tales game, that would be weird. I also don't know if it's forward or backward swastika, which is enhance, which is inherently of an incorrect incorrect statement to in, to infer, or at least it's or at least I, it's unclear which one I'm talking to when I say forward and backwards, like which one I mean, because <laughs> that's that's iffy on its own right to even imply one or the other. They're supposed to be protecting the people from demons, but there are demons right under their noses. Abby security is certainly lacking here. The whole point of building those massive walls around the city is to keep people safe inside. But if there's a demon outbreak on the inside, those same walls will make it harder for everyone to escape. The palace covers a lot of ground. 
so there are tons of hiding places. It wouldn't be hard for a demon to slip in through the waterway. I'm sure the Abbey is aware of that. Perhaps it's a trap made to lure intruders in. What? They lure demons in and then ignore them? Something doesn't add up. I know, right? Someone's getting mad about the mention of swastikas because all jokes are illegal in 2017. They were outlawed after the great internet wars of... <laughs> oh. No, thank you. I just want to take all your stuff. I think I feel like the, one of the most one of the most horrible things to do in a video game would be to create a mimic chest monster, but only have it show up once in the entire game and have it be really big and scary and like have a bit of a like uh, even like noisy like it just jumps out and this big monstrous thing suddenly happens. It only happens once in the entire game and it's always a random chest. <laughs> That'd be amazing. That'd be amazing if there was like. Just out of nowhere, one singular randomized jump scare, just to make you a little nervous about uh, loot chests for the entire game. So this should loop back around to the other side of the environment I was just in, where I fought everything. But I believe there was another piece of room after that rubble, so I should be able to grab stuff. There's, they usually hide stuff around here. Yep, there's a chest. As expected. There's already a little bit of that in, uh... Well, it hasn't happened so much in this game yet, but at least in Zestiria, they liked to put monsters directly on the ceiling above, uh, loot chests, so you'd be in the process of opening a chest and something would just... a giant spider would fall from the sky on your character, and you'd have to fight it now. I'm like, that's, uh, that's a horrifying. I found you! Oh. What an incredibly well-hidden switch. This is in, this is definitely puzzles and not busy work. Flip the switch to unlock that passage you've never seen before, so it literally never blocked your path progress. Here we go. I do find JRPG uh, dungeon design strange at times. I've seen it in this game, I've seen it in uh, uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions and Final Fantasy XV and a few other games where they're not... they're not puzzles. Like, it's not a... it's not me a mechanic that's interesting on any level, it's just... We need to get through here while it's still nighttime. The perfect place for prognostication. Eeny teeny spiny crow, which way, which way, shall we go? Mogilu. Oh! Verily the icy glare of death! Boy, which way do you think is best? I... Uh, there must be a way up somewhere. Let's find it. Uh, Yay, we get to continue this game with just the slight undertone of child abuse. <laughs> but yeah, there's a certain quirk of JRPG dungeon design I've seen for, for, in most games so far that I've experienced where... It's not really a puzzle, it's just more like they didn't want it to just be hallways, so they created a tiny interaction of, hey, click on that thing real quick. Okay, now you can go. Why so glum, Velvet? The thought of killing a man weighing heavy even on your own damaged conscience? Not especially, but I wonder how you remain so flippant about it. Hey, I'm not here to murder anyone. I'm just tagging along in search of my traitor. <clears throat> Do we have to kill him? Can't we just make him stop this nectar business? I don't think he'd listen to us. Huh? Word in the taverns is that this high priest is a real shady character. The Abbey and the religion are popular now, but three years ago, no one had heard of them. High Priest Gideon was the one who led the church through those dark days. But once Malachim became visible to the general public, and they learned how effective Malach arts were against demons, that all changed. Humans are such fools, only believing what they can see with their own eyes. And once the church had attained popular support, a nasty power struggle swept through the ranks. Many vied for the mantle of high priest, charlatans, power-hungry converts, but they all faded away. They left the church? No, they all met their maker, some from disease, others from accidents. And in the end, Gideon became high priest. Uh 
He may be the head of the church, but the people clamor for Shepherd Artorius. That's got a sting. Either way, if we're to face him, he might have some tricks up his sleeve. We'll need to keep our eyes open. It doesn't matter who he is. We just do our job. I think their heart's in the right place from a level design perspective. Oh, hello. Do I have enough for this? Yes. Because their goal is to basically distract you from the fact that there is like a distraction buffer. There's a there's a time buffer between you and your goal. RPGs are supposed to be long and time consuming and full of combat and, and dungeons and stuff. So whenever they give you a new objective, it's like, it's on the other side of this dungeon. Go run through hallways for half an hour. And that's just the that's just the formula that their games work on. So like that's just that's just uh, taken for granted. That's gonna be how it works out. So they're like, okay, well we it can't just be hallways. We don't want to Final Fantasy 13 this and have it literally be a straight hallway. So a uh, bunch of branching paths with little chests everywhere, and like there's an attempt there. And I get it, but one of my favorite genres, of course, is like Metroidvania RPGs, ranging all the way from actual like Castlevania to say Dark Souls and stuff like that. So, see, it's, it's hard not to be like, but I've seen that other level. You've maxed on this item. Would you like to return or abandon? That's weird. So, like, you can delete the item instead of picking it up? But I can't, can't pick it up. My option is leave it here or delete it from the face of the earth so it stops distracting. I guess, yeah, like if, you, you, if you delete the shiny point, it would go away. But, yeah, like, while, the, while I think their heart's in the right place, I can't help but feel that it, pa it pales a little bit compared to, uh... Take a look at this. Just compared to what I've seen in other games that uh, that just sort of uh, invest more of their development into this uh, this part of the game. What a treasure! Twins clothes, clothing found in a chest of drawers on the Diamel Islands. Some say they were once worn by two twins whose mastery of mimicry is the stuff of legend. I'm guessing that's a. It's probably from some character from a Tales game. Let's make a guess. Uh, Zillia, maybe. Grace's F? I don't. I don't know. It's not from the games. I, the games I've played so far. That's my whole guess. Okay, so now we've done a bunch of Diamel Islands, which is level two, to the point where I've now reached level three. So I can go to the X Sphere C. My whole st my strategy is just to keep going under the same place until the specials unlock. Uh, we admittedly have to get both of these. the The third rank of both of these still need to happen. So I might start the new one, or I might go back into the other ones. But, uh, looks like it's consistently some kind of, uh, some kind of piece of equipment or cosmetic item or something, and then one recipe. And I'm not sure what the third one is yet. We'll start X-Sphere C, because I can. Oh, 